Hello, hello. I am Linda White, and this is Shakuri's Time Capsule, a brief podcast where we take a weekly trip down memory lane. Today, I'd like to salute those breakfast cereals we grew up with. Luckily, most of them are still sold today, so our kids and grandkids can enjoy them like we did. I'd say that most of the breakfasts I had as a kid were mainly breakfast cereals. Sometimes we'd have Pop-Tarts or, even better, Toastettes. But more often than not, it was cereal. And a lot of the time back in the 60s and 70s, there'd be a cool toy in the box. Now, I grew up in a family with four kids, and I can't remember how on earth my mom decided which kid got whatever toy happened to be in the box that week. I imagine we all just took turns. The first time I remembered there even being prizes in cereal boxes was around the year 1970 when we were living in Altus, Oklahoma. I can't recall which cereal I had that morning, but I do remember that the prize in the box was a Josie and the Pussycats figurine. I used to watch Josie and the Pussycats religiously back then, so I was really excited to get one of them in my breakfast cereal. I think the one I ended up with was Melody, the stereotypical dim-witted blonde who was the band's drummer. Now, there was a time when you can get all sorts of cool toys in cereal boxes, like figurines of different cartoon characters or animals, little cars, puzzles, Dakota rings, small storybooks, whistles, all kinds of stuff. I don't think cereal companies do this anymore, do they? I wouldn't know because the only time I get cereal, it's the boring, grown-up, healthy stuff, not the kind that have a toy in it anyway. Here's a piece of trivia for you. What do you think the very first cereal prize was? Well, in the very early 1900s, Kellogg's Corn Flakes had the first breakfast cereal prize. The Funny Jungle Land Moving Pictures book was given to customers who bought two packages of Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Later on in 1945, Kellogg started putting pin button prizes inside their cereal boxes. These pin buttons featured images of popular comic characters, as well as U.S. Army squadrons. After all, World War II was still in its final years back then. In my family, we had our favorites. I remember a couple of my siblings loved Captain Crunch. For any of my overseas listeners who may not be familiar with Captain Crunch, it's a square-shaped corn and oat hybrid that came in several different flavors. It's also reportedly one of the first cereals to use an oil coating to deliver its flavor. Now, personally, I never cared for Captain Crunch because it always left a very unpleasant aftertaste. Even the peanut butter version just tasted like chemicals to me, and I love peanut butter. Anyway, with that said, here are my personal top five favorite breakfast cereals from childhood. In fifth place is Apple Jacks. Even just saying Apple Jacks immediately brings to mind that commercial jingle. Apple Jacks, Apple Jacks, Apple Tasty Crunchy 2, Kellogg's Apple Jacks. Now what more could you ask for than one of nature's best flavor combinations, apples and cinnamon? Nuff said. Luckily, this cereal is still very much alive and kicking. Number four goes to Honeycomb. Now, with this cereal, I think it was the cool honeycomb shape that fascinated me more so than the flavor, which was still quite good, mind you. And, of course, there were those mid-70s commercials featuring the kids up in the honeycomb hideout treehouse. Ooh, how I wanted a treehouse of my own. The only problem was that we didn't have any large trees in our yard at the time. Oh, well. In third place, oh, those golden grams. Yep, I vividly remember that commercial from around 1975 because it featured Marta Kristen, who played Judy Robinson for my favorite TV show around that time, Lost in Space. This cereal is actually one I'd eat today as an adult. Golden Grahams are nice little crunchy squares with the honey graham cracker taste. I just checked and I'm happy to report that Golden Grahams is still around today. Yay! In second place is Sugar Crisp. 
Now this cereal, which is basically puffed wheat with the candy-like sweet coating, underwent a few name changes over its lifetime. When Post first introduced it back in 1948, it was called Happy Jacks. The following year, it was renamed Sugar Crisp, and by the late 60s, it was named once again Super Sugar Crisp. Now this is the cereal I remember eating as a kid. By the mid-80s, when a lot of cereal manufacturers were dropping the word sugar from their product names, the cereal once again was given a new identity as Super Golden Crisp. Nowadays, it's simply called Golden Crisp. The Bear logo also went through several name changes, but he'll always be Sugar Bear to me. Interestingly, this cereal is still called Sugar Crisp up in Canada. Go figure. My number one all-time favorite cereal, huh? it's none other than Lucky Charms, as in magically delicious. This cereal definitely had that special ingredient savored by young taste buds, those colorful sweet marshmallows. Lucky Charms also holds a special place in my heart because it was born the same year that I was, 1964. Back then, there were only four types of marshmallows in Lucky Charms. Pink hearts, yellow moons, orange stars, and green clovers. Eventually, blue diamonds, red balloons, rainbows, green trees, blue moons, unicorns, diamonds, etc. were added. Some of these are limited edition shapes. I think there's something like eight permanent marshmallow colors and shapes now. Okay. Now, who out there only picked out the marshmallows and left the rest of the cereal? Come on, I know a lot of y'all did this. Or maybe you were like me and ate the oat cereal bits first until you were left with a bowl full of colorful marshmallows to enjoy like a morning dessert. Mmm, all this talk about Lucky Charms is making me want to go out and buy a box. It's literally been decades since I had any. As I said earlier, it's all about boring, healthy adult cereals now. So what were your favorite cereals from childhood, and do you still eat them today? Or have you passed the baton on to your kids and grandkids? Drop me a line at shakuri2 at gmail.com. That's C-H-A-K-K-U-R-I and the number two at gmail.com. Or check out this podcast's Instagram page. The account name is Shakuri's Time Capsule, all one word. Looking for a book to curl up with? Do you like fiction set in decades long ago? If so, you might want to check out my two books that are currently available on Amazon. Yellow Gal, Queen of the Montclair, and The Belle of Camden County, both written by me, Linda M. White, are set in the Old South during the late 1800s and early 1900s, and they deal with the subject of racial identity. Both novels are available in paperback and digital formats. Once again, it's time for me to wrap things up. And thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking time to listen today. Do take care and stay safe out there. Adios.